Hello and welcome to London. <laughs> Look at how ridiculously beautiful everything is here. It's not okay. Right now I am visiting London and basically my only two forms of tourism are A, putting in my headphones and listening to moody nostalgic playlists from high school and looking at architecture and wandering around aimlessly, and B, <laughs> going to vintage slash thrift stores. So today we're gonna do the latter because I figured the former would be a little bit depressing and I would also get copyrighted. <laughs> so yeah, let's go thrift shopping. So for some background, today I'll be thrifting mostly around the Notting Hill area. I'm not gonna lie, I booked my Airbnb near here almost exclusively because of the 1999 classic starring Hugh Grant. I tell you what, I'll throw in one of those for free. Useful for uh, lighting fires, wrapping fish, that sort of thing. Now, unfortunately, I have yet to find a charming British lover who owns a bookstore, but I did find some cute vintage clothing, at least. So first, I made a quick stop at Portobello Market, which is a little outdoor market full of food and clothes and plants that I had to exercise all my willpower not to buy. Unfortunately, since I filmed this on a Monday, only a couple of clothing stalls were out, but I've heard that there are a lot more on the weekends. I did think the corduroy collar on this jacket was super cute, mainly just because I have an unhealthy obsession with corduroy, but ultimately, I didn't find anything here to take home. So next, I arrived at the Vintage Motherland, Goldsmith Vintage. Now this store's reputation precedes it. Everyone from my Airbnb host to you guys on Instagram had recommended checking this place out. The curation was fucking out of this world, but so were the prices, unfortunately. Now, one thing that really caught my eye was their selection of vintage denim. I swear finding a good pair of vintage jeans is harder than finding a good boy on Tinder, but that sure as hell does not stop me from trying. I tried on a few pairs here, but alas, neither of them are getting a second date. Um, they were just not the perfect fit. I found a couple Disney tops that I thought were really cute, but I felt like they wouldn't really integrate with my current wardrobe very well since they were a little bit in your face 90s. And I found a denim jacket that I really liked that I may or may not have decided to purchase. You'll find out at the end. Dun dun dun! Next, I made a quick round of some charity shops. Charity shops are England's closest equivalent to American thrift stores. Prices are really affordable, around three to 10 pounds, and the proceeds go to a charitable cause such as cancer research or children's hospitals. I found them really well organized, but as many of you warned me, the pickings are a bit slim. I saw a lot of great basics like sweaters and cardigans and jeans, but was out of luck finding anything with that special vintage pizzazz. I don't know if anybody says pizzazz anymore. Just me, apparently. I did find one charity shop that I loved. The Royal Trinity Hospice on Portobello Road was super well organized and had a surprising number of designer items, like these insane 70s Dolce & Gabbana heels that have a freaking corduroy butterfly on them. If that isn't the perfect shoe, I don't know what is. <laughs> Unfortunately, they were too small for me, but I had a look around at everything else. The manager of this store, turns out, was actually a subscriber as well, and she was absolutely lovely. She's clearly very good at her job because the store was amazing, and she gave me a bunch of other recommendations for where to shop next. Anyways, here is me making a fool out of myself in the fitting room. First, I decided to try on this pastel pink blazer. Now, I feel like if Lady Gaga wore this on the red carpet with her Joanne hat and like a little bit of cleavage, <laughs> she would look fucking amazing, but alas, I am not Lady Gaga, and it was just a little bit baggy on me. I also tried on a couple Mean Girls worthy pink cardigans and decided that this pastel one was indeed so fetch. <laughs> I picked up this dress from the designer section. I was fucking crazy about the corset detail, but I wasn't crazy about the fit, so I was trying to figure out if it was something I could alter. And for some goddamn reason, I decided to try on these heart-shaped pajama pants. I think they were actually by a designer brand, like Chloe or something, so I was like, they've gotta look good on me. They don't look good on me. Anyways, moving on. Lastly, I hopped on a bus to a charity shop called Trade in Shepherd's Bush. Now, I guess I unintentionally saved the best for last because this turned out to be by far my favorite thrift store that I went to that day. The prices were all under 20 pounds. There was a huge selection and I found some really unique and funky vintage pieces that I will show you in my haul here. Oh, snap, look at that smooth transition. Hello guys, and welcome back to the room I'm staying in. It is several days later, but I'm wearing the same outfit to try to convincingly look like I filmed this all in one day. 
when in reality the sun sets at 4 30 p.m and i wake up around noon so i only have like four hours of sunlight to film anything which is why it's taking me so damn long to make this video so first up i thought i would show you guys what i got from trade which is the last store that i went to this was the most affordable store that i got anything from so i'm the most excited about it because i feel like it is the true spirit of thrift shopping where i actually am like proud that i found something that was really affordable versus some of this other stuff which was just like ungodly expensive but i paid for it anyways because i am a vintage ho anyways first up i got these red corduroy pants when i saw these on the rack i did not think i was gonna like them that much because the color is so bright it's like a very in your face clifford red red it's a red red you know and normally i'm more of like a neutral tones type of gal but i tried these on in the fitting room and they just fit so well i have a weirdly long torso for some reason i know she got torso for days boys <laughs> i have like really short legs and a long torso so sometimes it can be really hard for me to find pants that fit well especially high-waisted pants because pants that are high-waisted on like a normal torso are not that high-waisted on my lengthy ass torso so these ones hit me right at my natural waist which is perfect and honestly like when i tried them on in the fitting room there is something about having bright red pants on that makes it feel kind of like confident and groovy so i liked it i thought it especially paired well with a graphic t-shirt like this one that has a little bit of red detail on it so it ties the whole outfit together oh and these were only seven pounds which is actually pretty comparable to american thrift stores um so i was quite proud of these the other thing i got from trade was this dress oh my goodness um again this was something i picked up off the rack and i was like this is a little bit much this is a little bit silly but once i tried it on i don't know i just really liked it i don't know what occasion a normal person would wear this to maybe like a wedding or a casting call for Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> but I guess one really nice perk of my job is even if I don't get to wear this like every single day as a normal person, I at least will get to wear it for like a lookbook or a photo shoot or an event. I could wear this to the streamies, <laughs> maybe. I kind of wish that we could just wear whatever we wanted to. Like, I know you can kind of wear whatever you want to, but like really wear whatever you want to. Like if you felt like wearing a scuba diving outfit one day, you could wear that. Or if you felt like dressing up, <laughs> like a little tea time princess you could do that or if you wanted to dress up like an 18th century monarch to go to the grocery store you could also do that now onto stuff that i got from goldsmith vintage i caved and i bought this denim jacket i also know that somebody is gonna make fun of me for buying this denim jacket because i just did a closet clear out video like a month ago and i got rid of a couple denim jackets and my defense for that is that um you are right and I'm awful. But <laughs> I do really love the fit of this denim jacket and it is something that I had actually specifically been looking for. A lot of my previous denim jackets and denim jackets that you'll normally find at new um, what's a new clothing store called? Just a regular clothing store. <laughs> a lot of the times the silhouette that you'll find at contemporary retailers is oversized, but then it'll cinch back in at the bottom. And I find that really unflattering, especially if you're wearing a dress or a skirt that flares out because it like prevents your silhouette from flaring out and you really tend to lose your waistline versus vintage denim jackets tend to flare out at the bottom. So it's a little bit more of a triangular shape. I kind of look like a little denim not show chip if you know what I mean but when I'm pairing it with dresses and skirts I think it's a lot more flattering because it allows my hips to kind of flare out if that makes sense at all it also has this quilted lining which I really like rolling up the sleeves and having that little pop of yellow to contrast with the blue denim moral of the story is that I am a huge nerd for denim jacket fits and very small details and this is by far my favorite denim jacket that I have owned so far so that was why I was willing to splurge on it a little bit I also picked up this denim midi skirt from goldsmith vintage I have been looking for a denim midi skirt for a really long time I have been wearing the same denim mini skirt from Brandy Melville for probably five years at this point and I still really love that skirt but I like that this one is a little more structured and conservative and it feels less like I'm you know, a 13 year old visco girl and a little bit more like fashion blogger slash 80s mom. It also fits me really well around the waist. It's that nice, like high quality vintage denim that's tough, but broken in. So it's like tough and soft at the same time, like a good man. <laughs> nope. Okay. Lastly, I got two things from, I forget the name of the store, but I'll insert it over here. <laughs> the other secondhand shop that I went to. I picked up this light pink cardigan for 10 pounds. I thought it was a pretty good price for a nice basic piece. To be fair, I think this is something that you could pretty easily find at like a Goodwill or Salvation Army in America too, for probably like 
a couple dollars cheaper than what I got it for, but I really like the color. I've been seeing a lot of girls on Instagram styling these cardigans as well, either like buttoned all the way up and tucked into high-waisted jeans, or I've seen people style them where they only button up the top couple buttons and then they leave the rest unbuttoned. So it's a little like sexy grandma moment. Anyways, I got this cardigan, great. And then lastly, I got this corset dress. I caved, this was 50 pounds. Um, but it's by the brand Temperly, which I'm going to assume is some type of designer brand because it says the estimated retail price was 1,300 pounds. Although maybe that's just a lie to make me feel better about spending 50 fucking pounds on a vintage dress. Regardless, I just thought it was such a cool design. I have never seen a corset detail like this before and Mm, I just fell in love with it. However, it does not fit me perfectly right now, so I am gonna have to do a little alteration magic. I'm gonna take in about an inch from the sides so it hugs my waist a little bit better, and then I'm gonna take out the bottom of this dress so it's a mini dress instead of the current midi length. I think it'll look a lot more current and a lot more flattering on my body. Um, so I'm really excited to see how this turns out after I thrift flip it. All right, that is everything I got. Sorry, like some of this stuff is a lot more expensive than what you would find in thrift stores in America. I feel like normally the fun part of thrift hauls for people is being like, oh my god, she got that for only three dollars? Unfortunately, shit's just pricey here in London. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next week. Bye.